Okay, the Law 28 asked, what if you want to make this a digital program for guests not in town? I want to create something just like this that turns a page as you flip through the program. Is that possible through Canva? The answer is kind of. Let me show you how to do it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go create new design and then we're going to click presentations and we're going to go with the 16 by 9. Slide one will be the cover. All right, now you're gonna scroll down until you see uploads. Find your photos and click open. And they'll appear right here. Now take your photo and drag it right onto the canvas and then release. Now, if you'd rather just cut your photos out, I got a tutorial to show you how to do that right here. Okay, now let's make the subject stand out as much as possible. So we're going enlarger. You can place it wherever you want, but me personally, I'm gonna just place it to the right. Next, we need a background. So go ahead and scroll down here over to the left where it says Pexels. And under Pexels, I'm looking for a floor background, so I'll just type in flowers. And I like this one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and just click it, and then it ends up in a document right here. Now, of course, it's on top, so we need to position it to go to the back. And we also need to enlarge so that it covers the entire background. Now, maybe this is too much to put text on top of. It might be too hard to read. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click transparency. And we're going to pull that down to somewhere under 50%. And then also we want to change the color of the background. So we'll go to position. We'll go to layers. Click the background. Click the color wheel. And maybe make it like a dark purple. All right, for the text, I'm sticking to fonts that are legible, and I go into detail on that in this video right here if you want a more thorough explanation. But basically, I'm sticking to fonts that are easy on the eyes and clear to read at a glance. So we're going to go to our text, add a, add a heading, and just like for a funeral program, I'm going to type something like celebrating the life of, right? And this is too big. We'll just shrink that down a little bit. Pick something a little bit more elegant. Maybe italicize it. All right. And then we're going to add the person's name. That should be much bigger. Last name. All right. Now we want to put the timeline on here. And then just to make it a little bit more sentimental, go. Purple looks good with gold and white. So that's the colors I'm gonna be using for the text. You can change the color of the font by clicking on the text and then clicking the letter A up top that has the color bar underneath it. So I'll go ahead and do that for all my fonts. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of effect to some of this. I'm gonna add a glow to her first name by clicking on the name, clicking effects, and then under style, I wanna click neon. Let's go ahead and do that to the timeline too. Why not? Lastly, I want to add a border around the edge. To do this, on the left, we'll scroll down to where it says cam border. And if you don't have this, you can click on apps and then type in cam border. And then we'll adjust our margin and border thickness, pick the matching color, and then click add to design. I don't want the border on the top of the subject, so, so I'm going to drag this down to the bottom layer. Next page, we'll put the obituary there. Following the same style for page one, I'm going to use the same font, color, and effect for the title right here. Next, I want to add a new background, similar style, and then we'll fill the entire page with the obituary. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just add placeholder text. On page three, I'll swap out the background again, but this time I want to only have prayer for the text. Something in relation to the funeral service is best. For demo purposes, I want all my photos on one slide. Now, to add a photo, we should pick a frame first. On the left, you scroll up to elements, scroll down to frames, and pick the one that catches your eye. Then we're going to drag that onto the canvas, as many as you need. Now we'll go back to our photo gallery and add the photos one by one. 
by dragging each photo on top of a frame and releasing, it'll automatically mask the photo into the frame size. If you want a border, you can click on a frame and then click the three lines in the toolbar and set your border options. The border weight will control how thick the border is, but me personally, I usually don't go past size 4. But it's totally up to you how you want to set it up. For the last page, I want to add the order of service, another area for the photo, and some tributes for the family. Again, I'm going to drop my background in first and then lay out my photo. I'm going to be using a more fancy elegant frame this time for the picture and I want to place it in the center between the order of service and the tributes. You can arrange things however you want creatively. Once I got my text laid out, I go through the effort of making all the titles stand out from the rest of the text. Same as page one, we'll click on our text, click the color bar, change to yellow, and then click effects and then select neon. Repeat this step as much as you need to. Now here comes the transitions and time lengths. Notice at the bottom, we have a small thumbnail of each page. If you click on one, you should see three dots pop up. Click the dots, and then you'll wanna to go to add transition. Here, Canva gives you nine different transitions to pick from, and I think I wanna go with the uh, chop transition. The other options allow you to change the duration of how long the transition will last, the direction of the transition will move in, and the origin the transition will begin from. Once you've picked your transition at the bottom, just click apply between all pages. Now, if you're gonna have this on a projector at a funeral service, it might be easier to run a presentation through autoplay. You also wanna be able to set time durations for each slide. To do this, click duration at the bottom. Next, click on a slide, and at the top, click the clock icon. All right, now let's see a demonstration. At the top right, click present. If you wanna autoplay it, you can click autoplay to test and see just how to play out in real time. Then you click present at the bottom. Hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you got any questions. You can leave them in the comments. Appreciate y'all watching. Peace.